<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, Backwoods People, Campers. What strange, otherworldly encounters, skinwalkers, Bigfoot, etc., have you had deep in the woods? I was hiking in the Ho Rainforest on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington back in 2003. I was trying to do this really snazzy hike from the ocean to Mount Olympus. Well, day one is a blast, get everything accomplished. Day two, fog. Fog as thick as anything you can imagine. I can't get a decent GPS fix, so I'm pretty much blind, but I know if I follow the Ho River upstream, I'll get to one of the campsites I'm going for. The day goes by, and the fog isn't clearing up at all. I get to a fairly large clearing and set up my tent. I grab a power bar and chill out as it starts going to the darkest black night I've ever experienced. I'm seriously a bit unnerved by the whole thing, not scared as much as just anxious. About 2 in the morning, I started hearing this huffing noise. Like Darth Vader without the helmet on. My imagination starts to go freaky, and I reach for my flashlight. I pull the drawstring on the tent a little, very quietly, and poke my head out. Still dark as death. I hear the noise coming from maybe 5 feet to my right. At this point, I'm seriously rethinking my belief in Sasquatch. I poke my flashlight out and turn it on. I'm a few feet away from a massive Roosevelt elk, who'd lost his way in the dark as well. He sees the flashlight, bolts the other way, tags a tree, and knocks himself clean out. I lay in the tent until I heard a groan, a bunch of commotion, and the big guy grunt away. Not me, but my dad and his brother. He was passing an abandoned mine shaft, which is common in Appalachia, and he stopped to inspect the slurry for animal tracks. He saw an unusual three-toed footprint. He guessed that it was about the size of an average man's palm. This was in the early 2000s, and I can distinctly remember him and my uncle talking about it when they came home from the woods that day. For reference, my dad is now 70 and has spent his entire life in rural Appalachia as an avid outdoorsman. There isn't a footprint in those hills that he couldn't identify. It didn't really cross my mind too much until I ran across a documentary in 2020 about unusual three-toed footprints and other strange instances in the same area, it's called Hellier and it's free on YouTube, if anyone is interested. Funnily enough, the footprints in the documentary were also associated with abandoned mine shafts. Without ever mentioning the documentary to my dad, I showed him a picture of one of the footprints from the documentary and asked him if it had been similar to the one he found years ago. He enthusiastically confirmed that they were basically identical. Super crazy. Two things in one night, both involving the same friend, both involving my need to go to the bathroom at around 10 p.m., I needed to spit. So I left our site to use the restrooms, which were about one quarter mile away. It's pitch dark. As I was walking, I saw one of my friends who was with us walk from a path leading to an unused site onto the main path. This unused site path was a good 50 yards away from our site path. My friend has a very noticeable and peculiar gait, way of walking so I knew it was him. At multiple points, he turned around and asked, why are you following me? Always a good 40 or so feet ahead of me. I would reply I literally told you guys I was going to the bathroom and ask, why did you come from a different site? He picked his pace up, and I eventually lost him in the darkness. I get to the restrooms without seeing him, take my shit, and upon returning to my site, where he of course is, I start asking why I'm being ducked with. Everyone denies that my friend even left. Okay, so they're ducking around, no big deal. 3 AM rolls around, and I wake up needing to pee, no need to walk to the restrooms this time. I'll just walk off into the woods for a bit. As I walk back after my piss, I hear the distinct sound of a tent zipper opening. In the darkness, I can tell it's my friend, and then I can barely see but definitely hear him zip it back up. As I get closer to the tents, I see him more clearly, and he walks a bit. He goes to light a cigarette, I can see his face and the flint strikes of the lighter, even clearer when it manages to catch. He lights his cigarette, takes a puff, and says, can you hear me? Me, yeah, I can hear you, what's up? Again, much louder this time, can you hear me? Me yeah. Are you trying to wake everyone up? He kind of shakes his head at me, then turns and walks towards the cars. Maybe 30 feet away from him. Thinking I'm being ducked with again, I go to follow. Lose him behind a car. I turn the corner of it, and he is nowhere to be seen. I'm pissed, he thinks he's so funny. So I go back to his tent. It's still closed, and I can hear him faintly snoring inside it. I don't know what it was I saw exactly, but it looked, sounded, and walked just like my friend. I was slightly inebriated, but not enough to hallucinate. He denies he ever left his tent or went through the woods ahead of me.
When I was hunting with my father, I encountered something that was not human. We were in the forest, and it was around 10 or 9 p.m., and we were making our way back. We practiced proper gun safety, but we always kept our guns loaded in case we were attacked by any type of animal. On our way back, I was feeling really strange, like we were being watched through the trees. I thought it was just me until my father looked at me and asked, do you feel that way too? I was rattled down to the core, and we both knew that something was off. We decided not to think much of it and continue back to our trailer. We were on a path that was relatively flat when we heard something behind us. We both turned around, and to the left of us in the overgrown area off the path, there was something standing there. It looked like a man wearing nothing with his arms crossed and holding his shoulders. My father reacted fast and grabbed his rifle off his back, but he didn't even point it at him, he just kept it pointed down, paralyzed in fear. We didn't say anything, and it was around 7 seconds when we both got the idea to run. We ran for about 2 minutes until we got back to our camp area. My father didn't say anything, he just looked at me and then asked, are you okay? We decided to end our trip early and go back. My dad said things like this happen, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's better just not to talk about it. I'll never forget that day, and I always question who exactly was there and why I had to see that. Nobody ducking believes me, and it won't be any different now. I was like 10 or 11, and I was in the woods behind my grandpa's ranch with my two cousins. It was just after lunch, and it was light out. We were poking a dead cat with some sticks when we saw an alien or some kind of monster. I don't know what the duck it was. It was white and had big eyes, and it tilted its head slightly when we saw it. I was too busy screaming and running for my life to get a good look at it, but that's what I saw. It was just kind of crouching there by a big tree, staring at us. All three of us saw it. We got back to the ranch, and we were all crying and screaming, so my uncle took his shotgun and told us to take him to where the creature was. I didn't want to go back, and neither did my little cousin, but my older cousin agreed as long as he could get a shotgun too. So they went back there, and of course the thing was nowhere to be found. No one believes us to this day, and my uncle insists that we must have seen some kind of animal, but there was no ducking way that was an animal unless it was a deformed, hairless monkey. It didn't look anything like those grey aliens or anything I have ever seen, its head was kind of triangular, and the eyes were round. The closest thing I can think of is a praying mantis, but it was the size of a small child, and what I was able to see of it was pure white. I didn't see any limbs or anything like that that I can remember, just what looked like a head and neck or torso or something. I don't ducking know. Just thinking about it is freaking me out again. Duck that thing, whatever it was. I was up in bear country around a reservoir, and we had a great campsite all alone, unimproved, meaning it was a place people had camped before but by no means built in or official, with an incredible view. It was just my girlfriend and I, we had food we cooked by the fire and eventually headed off to bed in a three-man tent, so there wasn't a ton of space to go around. I had brought a shotgun and rifle, both with rounds capable of stopping an average bear, but I didn't want to find out for sure. So after we are asleep for about 20 minutes or so, probably sometime between 11 p.m. and 12 a.m., I start to hear things moving around as I'm woken up. Thinking that this really isn't too big of a deal, I try to go back to sleep, thinking that it's probably just a deer or smaller animal passing by. I start to hear noises again, and this time they're closer and more distinct, almost like how a person sounds in the woods. The nearest people we knew were at least a few miles away and would not easily be able to get to us or our car, which, I should mention, was probably 100 yards or so from the campsite. It couldn't make it all the way up the faint, rocky road. So at this point, knowing that we can't just run and that bears are notorious in the area, I remember that our food is sealed away with the fire essentially out, but the sealed cooler was 50 yards from our tent. It couldn't be, there's no way they could smell anything in it, so what was walking around? Maybe I just screwed up, and it can smell it. I leaned over to open up the little zip window, saw nothing, and went back to sleep. Within less than a minute of lying down, I heard something run its hands, paws, or whatever else along the walls of our tent. Scared at this point, I try to ward off the intruder with the sound of my shotgun loading. But not only does it not stop, but it starts to make noises all around. My girlfriend, awake at this point, is frozen in position, about to cry. Realizing that our only choices are flight or flight, I rip open the door to the tent with gun in hand to find literally nothing anywhere at all. We left as soon as we could. To this day, I have no idea what that was, but it was so vivid, it couldn't have just been the wind of my imagination. I guess it sounds like one of those you would have had to have been their stories, but believe me, in the middle of nowhere, it's terrifying. My friends and I used to camp a lot in the El Dorado National Forest. 
We had a spot along Sapiago Springs that we used to camp at a lot. One weekend, we decided to go on a three-day foraging camp. We brought in MREs in case we couldn't find anything, some guns, and some supplies to set up shelter, but that's about it. The first night was chill, we cooked a bunch of crawdads and a squirrel my buddy shot, drank a few beers we'd brought, and slept fine. The next day, something felt off to me. One of my friends who was with me and I had had some really creepy experiences in this part of the forest in the past, and it felt a bit like those, the forest was dead silent, and you felt like something was watching you. I grew up in the woods, so I know the signs of a predator, but this felt different than a bear or a mountain lion. When night fell, my friends went 200 yards or so up the stream to do some stuff, and I was alone in camp. The feeling got even stronger, so I built up the fire nice and big and grabbed a gun. I kept hearing faint voices from the woods in the opposite direction of where my friends went. They were low, indistinct sounds, but they were creeping me out significantly, and my buddies had taken the only two flashlights, poor planning in hindsight. As I peered out into the darkness, I caught a glimpse of something moving 50 yards or so out in the trees. I snapped the rifle to my shoulder and got the scope on it. It was pretty dark, and the only light was from the fire, but I could see the outline of what I was aiming at. It looked human but was on all fours, and its arms seemed a lot longer than they should. It stood a bit like an ape, but very low to the ground. I only saw it for a second before it loped off deeper into the woods. After I lost track of it, I'd hear light rustling in different directions around the camp, leaves scuffling, the occasional twig breaking. Always away from where my friends went, in the 180% on the other side of the camp from their departure. I got the sense that whatever it was, it was stalking me. I kept the fire high and was staying sharp, looking out into the woods, but I didn't see it again. My buddies came back about 10 minutes later to find me a paranoid wreck, glassing the tree line with a scope. I told them what happened, and they got quiet. They then told me the reason they came back when they did was because they started hearing the same SHT I did over by where they were, and it spooked them. We spent the second night of our trip with a big-ass fire and three lookouts. Nobody slept that night. In the morning, we broke camp as quick as we could and hightailed it out of there. We never camped in that spot again. I went to a canoe trip camp, canoe camping, in northern Canada while I was growing up. When I was there, the camp was already 102 years old. In the early years of the camp, they had First Nation, Cree and Ojibwe, guides on the trips. And in the early 1910s, they had a very popular and good guide who had just gotten married. He moved his wife out to a remote island on one of the lakes and built a cabin with her there. There were a few other cabins on the lake, but it was quite remote and on a fur trading route. They had a happy first winter there, but he was gone all summer guiding canoe trips, and during the fall and spring he would be gone for weeks at a time trapping animals for furs, only coming home to the remote cabin to get different clothes and drop off supplies to his young wife. One trip early in the fall, he came home to drop off supplies, and his wife had lost her mind, and she killed him by chopping him in the head with an axe. They found her screaming, stark mad, and naked on the shore of their island. She was committed and died shortly afterwards, she never recovered her mind. In the late 1990s, in the early fall, a husband and wife were canoe tripping down that same lake and were caught in a terrible storm. They took shelter on the island. They tried to set up their tent, but it was torn away by the wind. The guide's cabin still stood, the years had blown out the windows and collapsed part of the roof, but it was shelter enough from the storm. They hunkered down there that day and into the night as the storm raged on. The next morning, the wife was found naked and screaming for help, adrift in their canoe on the lake. The waters were still rough from the storm the day before, and she was inconsolable. She claimed a native man with half a head tore her clothes from her as she slept and that she was chased by a naked corpse of a woman into the night until she escaped in their canoe. She didn't know where her husband was. They found his body in the ruins of the cabin, with half his head missing. They never solved the murder. About six years ago, when I was still in high school, me and about five other guys went camping in midsummer in West Virginia. We took two four-wheelers with a wagon attached and rode down into the woods with all our stuff, and it was weird outside, like the atmosphere. We stayed with my friends the night before, and it rained until about 8 a.m. it was near his house, so we just rode that way. We left the house around 1 p.m., and it was still muggy but had that electrical kind of smell outside, and all around it was an odd day, cloudy and whatnot. We get around three miles out and stop to drink and have a smoke, and all of a sudden something darts across the trail about 40 yards away. We figured it was a deer and just went on. We ended up taking extra time to get there, crossing creeks and trees that had fallen, so we didn't get to camp until around 4. Set up, and all of a sudden, as we're starting to make our fire, we see something tall in the trees. 
We laughed and said the tree looked like a really tall deer on its back legs. Well, it darts and runs on its back legs. And we never saw it again. It must have been 10 feet tall. I never heard anything else on that trip, but that was beyond strange for us. I was driving in the middle of the night in the upper peninsula of Michigan for work. Our 16-ish of an 18-hour round trip, I was crossing a bridge at highway speed, 70 miles per hour or thereabouts, when a huge black shadow ran across the road, maybe 30 yards ahead of us. Far enough away that I didn't slam on the brakes and close enough that I was able to watch it run from the left side of the road to the right. To this day, I have no idea what it was, wolf is my best logical guess. The lake was frozen the year before, so wolves could have migrated from Canada. My coworker swore it was Bigfoot running on all fours, but she was from the area, i.e., the up, and had a stereotypical rural superstition. We hit a deer earlier in the drive, or maybe more accurately, a deer hit our car, it took off the passenger side mirror, so we were kind of on edge as it was. A freaky experience, especially with the length of the drive and the exhaustion that comes with driving for so long. I was in the middle of nowhere in the woods in North Carolina one night and saw a row of lights in the sky. The people I was with called me out and said, hey, you're the logical one, give us some reasons for this. So I did. I said, what about a plane? But no, the light patterns were way off. What about a military plane or stealth bomber? Nope. Wrong shape. What about a drone? Nope, too high up, and it was silent. A satellite? Nope, not the right shape and not quite far enough away. The lights were very, very high up, and when I borrowed binoculars, I saw that the lights were in a succession of rainbow colors, like an LED light that fades in and out. It suddenly shot left, then right, then directly upward, and disappeared. I had no explanation, and neither did my group. We were stunned. I went out crystal hunting with two friends in the PNW several years ago and ended up lost for a while. The path down the mountain we were on was pretty straightforward, but somehow I got drawn out into a thicket of rings of trees near a very camouflaged cliffside. What was weird, though, was that everything felt very heavy, and I heard giggling all around me right around the time I lost the path. Thankfully, my phone worked, and I was able to direct my voice to my friends after calling to tell them what happened. I walked up to them after hearing their voices, and when we went to get back on the trail, they couldn't find it. Here's the thing, though, they're both experienced hikers, campers, and outdoor people. I hadn't strayed off more than 20 feet, and they were right near other crystal hunters on the base of a mountain. I heard those people too, but when we came back up, there was nothing. My friends navigated us down the mountain regardless, and we ended up all the way back to the main road. One of the friends said she heard the giggling too and just didn't want to say anything until we got out of the area. It was spooky. We almost felt like we'd been chased off the mountain. I was a stupid kid, 13 to 16, fascinated with hunting but did not grow up in a family that ever hunted. I got my first BB gun, and I went into the woods to see what I could possibly get. I remember coming to a part of the woods where it was a swamp and there used to be an old farmhouse, which when I was younger, like two to three years ago, used to be still standing but at the time was nothing more than just the foundation or chimney. It was dusk out, everything was grey and shadowy, and I heard huge wings and saw a large bird land on the top of a dead tree. I saw its body shape and thought it were some owl or something, which now, looking back, I love and how majestic they are. It was stupid and probably illegal to hunt. I had a fascination with nature and a lack of knowledge of hunting, but I was a stupid kid and shot anyway. I saw the large bird drop, not quite sure what it actually was, it made a horrible screech on its way down to the ground, and I instantly regretted what I did. No less than a second later, the whole wood started screeching and howling with the most terrible sound I have ever heard. I heard in the trees around me, in almost all the trees, this weird screeching but more like whooping, like 100 witches started howling and whooping started coming from every direction around me. I ran home, which was about a one quarter mile from where I was, as quick as I could run. I only remembered this now and have looked up every owl distress call I could find for my area, but I couldn't find anything similar to what I heard that night. I had a paranormal encounter when I was camping with a few friends in Okanagan Falls, British Columbia, Canada. We were camping to celebrate my 13th birthday, and the girls and I had walked down to the lake for a swim. On the walk back to our campground, we walked along a river that had a fair-sized dam. Unfortunately, there has been an incident where two brothers drowned after being unable to escape the turbines a few years earlier. This town was only 40 minutes from my hometown, so we had heard the story on the news, the dam had been marked with a skull and crossbones and large signs saying danger. 
We were a couple hundred meters down the river and close to our campground when I saw an incredibly clear and bright white figure of a portly preteen boy walking atop the water. I stopped and told my friends to look, and one of them did and exclaimed she saw him too, the other covered her face and said she was too scared to look. We watched him for a few minutes until he faded away. He walked slowly along the river's surface for about 10 meters, then disappeared. It is still the most incredible supernatural encounter I have ever had. I went camping out near McLeod, California, down Squaw Valley, with my ex, and that night we both had the exact same dream of eight black hooded creatures surrounding our car. Then one of them put both hands on the rear window of our car and looked in at us. The dream was extremely realistic. Everything was exactly the same, straight down to the time setting, very early, about 5 or 6 a.m., our visual perspective for each part of the dream, the description of the entities, and even the feeling we had during the dream, which was a very cautious awareness of how powerful these things were, not quite scared but definitely a little on edge. We started doing research and figured maybe they were some kind of forest watchers. It felt like they were warning us not to tamper with the woods. We did notice someone had littered some drug needles in the area, which we found to be really bizarre because we didn't think anyone really knew about the spot. I have many other stories from that area that I'll also add separately in the comments. I love that area dearly, it's where I spent most of my life, and it's truly an energetic and supernatural hotspot. I lived at the edge of a national forest in the southern US. We used to have a huge problem with armadillos digging up my mother's garden at night. So our solution was to go out every night with a shotgun to handle them. One hot summer night, I came outside and did my usual walk around. As I was nearly at the back door, everything went silent. Not the silence of a hot summer night, but the dead silence of every animal in the area going dead quiet all at once. I was immediately on edge and began looking around in the dark, the flashlight on the shotgun cutting through the darkness. Then I pointed the light at the tree line, about 50 yards away. What I saw still haunts my dreams if I think about it too much. It was a set of glowing red eyes. Now you'd think oh, it's just a fox, deer, or coyote's eyes. These eyes were about 4 feet off the ground and more than a foot apart. On top of that, there was nothing attached to the eyes. No body, no shadow, just nothing. Every hair on my body went straight up. I've hunted hogs in the dark, been stalked by a mountain lion, and come face to face with a black bear. But those eyes scared me more than all the others combined. I raised the shotgun and fired a massive fireball, and the boom of the shotgun shattered the silence of the night. But the eyes remained, and this time the eyes, or whatever they were attached to, grew. It was a deep, guttural growl that seemed to vibrate off your bones. I began firing as fast as I could, walking backwards towards the house. The eyes began slowly advancing. I reached the back door, threw it open, and flipped on the flood lights for outside. From the other side of the door, I heard an angry hiss like water being thrown into a fire. The eyes were gone, and though I didn't sleep that night, I never saw them again. Last year, my family and I went camping up in Little Notches, here in Washington. It was during that really bad fire up by Bumping Lake. Anyways, one day during the dead of night, my girlfriend and I started hearing a loud clanking noise. As if someone were slamming very thick sticks against trees. We hear it repeatedly in one direction for a while, maybe at intervals of 10 at a time, then it goes quiet for a few minutes. Then, we would hear it in another direction outside of the camp. Once even coming from the direction of a smallish hill that we were camping next to. It kept coming from different directions all night. It always sounded as if the noise was coming from about 25 yards outside of the camp, give or take. We ended up falling asleep, and the next day everybody said they were hearing it as well. A family friend even left his tent that night to investigate but couldn't find anything or hear anyone. He thought he was just tripping out because it was his first time camping. Anyway, the noises were, of course, accompanied by twigs snapping on the ground. We couldn't find any animal footprints the next day. No scratches on trees from antlers or bear claws just my grandmother telling us that my little brother actually started sleeping walking towards one corner of the tent, to which he explained that he thought my grandma was outside of the tent calling him in his dream. My grandmother found a small pendant of an angel outside her tent the next morning. It could have been something random that an earlier camper dropped, but it just made the story more weird. I was hunting in a place I know very well. I had a very eerie feeling throughout the three-hour hike. I kept hiking up the mountain but never reached the road that cuts straight across it. I knew that if I just kept going, I would hit the road since it spans the entire mountain and I have hiked it for 30 years. All of a sudden, the woods did not look the same as they usually did, and I felt like I was being watched and became a little worried. I knew I needed to get on the road. I finally came to an opening and saw the road, 
but it did not look right. I knew if I walked down it, I would orient myself soon since I knew the area so well. My heart almost came out of my mouth when I looked a short way down the road and saw my truck. I was suddenly at the bottom of the mountain and at the far end of the road, past where I had parked my truck. It makes no sense. I essentially hiked up a mountain and suddenly ended up at the bottom. This happened 15 years ago, and I start to quiver every time I talk about it. My only thought is some kind of black hole. About three years ago, I had just broken up with my girlfriend, so my dog and I rented a cabin in the mountains so I could blow off some steam. We'd been dating for a while, and I really thought she was the one. But then I caught her cheating, and even though I tried to reconcile with her, she was too embarrassed to try to keep us together. The dog was a gift from her, and she left it with me, but I was happy to keep him. He was a little pug, and despite all the slobbering, he was the cutest thing ever. While we were in the mountains fishing and going on daily hikes, I couldn't help but get the feeling I was being watched. At first, I thought it might have had something to do with the breakup. When you get cheated on, your paranoia increases. But the paranoia persisted throughout the week and kept getting worse. On the third day, when we were climbing to this summit, my dog needed some water. So we took a detour to find a pond I'd seen from the beginning of the trail. When we got there, we walked around until there was a rocky beach where he could reach the water. I went to go pee a few paces away, and as I was relieving myself against a tree, I heard a branch snap somewhere in the forest directly ahead of me. Then the bird stopped singing. I finished quickly, and me and my dog returned to the trail but went back the way we came. I didn't want to be in the woods anymore that day. But the most scary part is that when we got back, it looked like someone had forced entry into the cabin. The door was broken into, and some of my clothes were taken off the shelf. At this point, I was getting really freaked out, but because I'm a dumbass, I decided to stay until Friday because that's when my dog died. It was 1988, and I was finishing up my senior year of high school. I was driving a family friend back to my parents' house. It was 10 p.m. at night. We were a block away from the house when we saw something in front of us. It was walking in the middle of the street from the right, out of the darkness. It continued to walk into the light of my car's headlights. If I continued driving, I would have hit it. I came to a dead stop. It looked like an Irish wolfhound, but double in size. It was muscular and slow moving. What is that? Said my friend. I didn't say anything. An animal usually scurries off after seeing lights or a car. This animal just continued to slowly walk past the car. My car's headlights created an eerie light. The animal looked at us. It wasn't a scary look. It looked at us from the side, like a human looks at someone when they are annoyed. It walked back into the darkness. It was dead silent in the car. We just looked at each other. Neither of us said anything to each other. I could tell my friend was shaken. I pushed my foot on the gas pedal and slowly began to move forward. I kept my gaze to the left, where the animal walked. I pulled into my parents' house, and we both quickly ran into the house. The two of us never talked about this incident again. I was with a group of friends in the woods behind a friend's house. As we were sitting by the campfire, the light started to dim. So, I went out to find firewood. I walked a fair distance into the woods because I also had to pee, so it was far enough that I couldn't see the fire anymore. After I was finished, I collected some wood and started making my way back. Now this was a half moon, and I could see pretty well in the dark with the little light the moon provided, and it was thanks to this light that I saw someone staring at me from behind a tree. The person's face was pale, with a gaping dark mouth and dark eyes. I, of course, shook my pants upon seeing this and started to run. When I made it to my friends, they saw how freaked out I was and asked me what was wrong. After hearing my story, several of my friends wanted to see this for themselves, something I could not comprehend. I got roped into going with them back to the face, and sure enough, there it was. This time, we had a flashlight, and my friend, with it, shone the light onto my face. The face was more gruesome than I imagined, with rotting features, a mouth with no teeth, and holes for eyes. Now the peculiar thing is that it had a stick coming out of its neck. Upon closer inspection, we realized it was a foam head that had been exposed to the weather or something for too long and had just been stabbed onto a piece of bamboo. We laughed at this for a minute, then got creeped out when we all realized that someone had put this here for no other reason than to scare us. We badgered my friend, whose woods we were in, about whether it was a prank or not, and he kept saying no and seemed genuinely disturbed. Apparently, he wasn't so shocked at the idea of someone being on his property and doing this, as he had been having strange occurrences at his house for a while. He woke up to a decapitated rabbit on his front porch, heard people running in the woods once when he came back home to retrieve something he forgot, and had a man, 
who looked homeless, come up to his front door one day claiming to be a priest who was wanting to spread goodwill to my friend and bless my friend's house. There were other things that happened, but according to my friend, they had stopped two months prior to the campout. We didn't sleep well that night. When I was 13 years old, I was with a buddy five miles away from the nearest anything smack dead in Sasquatch country, 30 miles east of Seattle, North Bend. I grew up here, and everyone has heard stories, especially since at one time something like 65% of the town was supported by logging up until the 1990s. Anyway, we were pretty isolated hiking Mount Washington. We were about halfway up, and we both experienced the same feeling. We turned and ran to where our bikes had been stashed two miles down some old trails, about 1,200 feet down the mountain. It was dreadful what we felt. I grew up here in the mountains and am very comfortable in this setting, but there was definitely some fear we both picked up on that day. Many people who have been around Sasquatch have had this same feeling. I don't know, but it was an internal warning sign for sure. A primeval feeling that makes one run from a perceived danger, or at least sense the danger. Weird. The forest is a crazy place. If you've ever been to the Cascades, you know anything could be out there. There are places I'm sure human footprints will never touch in the Cascades. This gave me chills. It was something an acquaintance told me. We are both ex-Mormons, so we would talk about our shitty experiences in the church. For people who don't know, the Mormon church encourages its barely adult members, especially young men, to take up the cause and go on a two-year mission to preach and try to convert folks. During this time, you leave your home and go someplace sufficiently far away that you're separated from everyone you know. You could get sent to another continent or across the country, often having to learn a new language. My friend was sent on a Navajo speaking mission, where most of his work was on the reservation. He and his companion, which is like a partner that goes everywhere with you, were not welcomed on the premises by everyone. I mean, Mormons annoy people everywhere, but given the church's history of massacring native peoples, this was to be expected. But they were persistent enough to really annoy people. One day, as they were driving off the road, they saw something running after them in their rearview mirror. And it was gaining on them. They freak out and accelerate, but the animal is right behind them. Keep in mind that they're going at about 60 miles per hour. It runs up so that it's right outside of the driver's window. He said that it looked like a big coyote and that it didn't even look winded. They were already spooked, but then it turned to look at them and had a human face. It made eye contact with them, then sped up, passing the car, and then ran into the distance off the road. He said that they went to the mission president, like the mission coordinator, and told them what happened, hoping not to have to go back after that. The president didn't buy it, and they continued to do mission work. They never saw whatever that was again, though. This is the story of my friend. But where I'm from, camping is closely linked to hiking and mountain climbing. To reach this particular campground on the way to climb this particular mountain, hikers have to walk on a single, non-looping trail. On the left side of the trail is a 10 to 20 meters deep valley, and on the right side is a cliff wall. This detail is relevant for the story. This guy did solo hiking and started at dusk. It should take 4 hours to reach the campground, but after 9 plus hours of walking, he's still on that trail with no sign of the campground. He's confused. He decided to leave his trekking pole in the middle of the trail as a marker and continued walking. After an hour or so of walking, guess what? There, in the middle of the trail, was his trekking pole, which he had left before. On that single, non-looping trail with no possibility to stray away from the path, he walked in loops for hours. He called it a day, set up a tent in the middle of the trail, and waited until morning. The next morning, he reached the campground in no time. Locals actually suggest people not walk down the trail after dark, because weird things happen, but there are no legal regulations. I did that trail too several years ago and had a similar experience, luckily not as bad as that. When I was in high school, my family owned a lot on Lake Simcoe in Ontario. I would camp there a few times every summer with my cousins and some of our friends. One night, four of us decided to go for a walk up a nearby side road that we called the Wolf Road because if you walked up it to the top of the hill at night, you could howl, and sometimes the wolves or coyotes in the area would howl back in response, yes, this was our idea of entertainment. This road is swamp or bush on one side and farmers fields and woods on the other, there are no street lights, and the nearest house is about a mile beyond the top of the hill. So off we go on a walk in hopes of hearing some wildlife when we see a light that we all assume is a headlight about to crest the top of the hill. We're all in dark clothing and don't want to be hit by this oncoming vehicle, so we find a good place to step off the road and wait. We wait about a minute, and two yellow lights crest the top of the hill. 
It takes about two seconds to realize they are not headlights but two illuminated figures coming towards us. We have all since agreed that it is very difficult to describe what they looked like, but I'll do my best. We could make out what looked like legs running, but it wasn't a human gait, it was more like that of the front legs of a deer. The rest of their bodies were either not illuminated or not there at all. They are coming towards us and crisscrossing each other as they run. They moved quickly, darting from one side of the road to the other. Sometimes one or both would dart into the trees on either side of the road and then come back out a little closer. None of us said anything at all for what felt like a really long time but was probably more like two to three minutes. Finally, both of them darted into the trees on opposite sides of the road and disappeared. Someone asked did you guys just see that? We all responded with something along the lines of yep, turned, and ran back to camp. We sat in silence for about 15 minutes before we started discussing what we saw. We all saw the same thing. If I had been alone, I would have assumed my eyes were playing tricks, but all of us saw it, and now, almost 10 years later, we are still trying to figure out what they were. We walked the road from top to bottom the next day and saw nothing. One of my cousins and I have gone back up the road at night a few times since and have never seen anything even remotely similar. About five years ago, four other friends and I were tenting in a pretty popular location, and it was Memorial Day weekend, so there were other people all over the area. At the time, we were about 14 and had brought along an OG board, candles, and incense. We used the Ouija board in broad daylight, and we got a connection and said the pretty standard you are going to die and don't go to sleep tonight kind of thing. We thought one of our friends, whom we will call Amy, was just messing with us because she was only saying these things with her hands on the moving piece, and we brushed it off. That night, we were getting ready for bed around midnight after some night hiking, and Amy started projectile vomiting out of nowhere. We got her out of the mouth of the tent and over to the creek until the episode was over. We had another friend, we'll call her Key, whose parents were tented about three sites over but had already gone to sleep, so we cleaned Amy off and all went to bed, telling her to just wake one of us up if she needed to go outside again. Key and another friend, Kara, were light sleepers, and whenever Amy woke up and started moving, they automatically woke up too, and one would go outside. The other friend and I were deep sleepers and didn't wake up once during these three times. I woke up at about 4 a.m. to the most gruesome scream I had ever heard in my life. I've slept through just about everything you could imagine, and yet I shot straight up with two of my friends, and we scrambled out of the tent. Two people from the other sites near us came out as well. Standing over our fire pit was a huge, black mass. Our tent was about 8 feet away, and Amy is passed out on the ground, Key is just standing there frozen, and it was as cold outside as I've ever felt, despite it being the end of May. We all just stared at it, and the couple from the other tent about 30 feet away came over and just stared at it. It was like black static, not illuminated at all by the moon, and shapeless. The girl that came from the other site threw something at it, and it just dissipated, with warmth returning to the area and Amy gasping and waking up. The five of us sat at the couple's picnic table with them and just sat there until the sun rose with a gas lamp. Amy didn't get sick again that night, and as soon as Key's parents woke up, we told them Amy had gotten sick and we wanted to go home. I camped at that same site numerous times after, and nothing like that ever happened again. Needless to say, I never touched a Ouija board again. This happened to me about two years ago. I live in northwestern Georgia and decided to go camping a couple miles from my house. Everything was normal until I went to sleep. About three in the morning, I was awoken to the sound of metal grinding metal and rock grinding rock, I could hear each noise simultaneously and clearly. It sounded like it was right on top of me, and I also felt extremely heavy. I could not move an inch or make a sound. This went on for about half an hour. After it stopped, I waited for another half hour and then grabbed my gun, 12 gauge, and my spotlight and poked my head out of the tent to see just what the hell had happened. Everything seemed normal other than the heavy feeling that like someone had turned up the gravity, everything even looked heavy. I laid back down and went to sleep after that. The next morning, when I got out of my tent, I saw a circle about 15 feet in diameter. It was also about 4 inches deep and 6 inches wide. Nothing was moved out of the way. Everything was pushed down with the dirt, including part of my campfire. It was about a foot from my tent. Needless to say, I packed my things and got the hell out of there. I grew up in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. I've spent most of my life outdoors, backpacking, hiking, solo trips, climbing, etc. I've always felt at ease and comfortable in the woods. I've lived all over the world, adventuring in the mountains. Currently, I reside in Utah. In September, the boyfriend, dog, and I took a three-day weekend to go to the Wind River Range outside of Pinedale, Wyoming. We arrived late at night and spent the night in the back of the truck at the trailhead. 
The next morning we hiked 10 miles to camp at Lost Lake. Lost Lake is a very small glacier lake with large rock cliffs and an incredible view of huge, craggy mountains. We set up camp next to the water, it was an amazing day. When night fell, things got strange. I had an uneasy feeling in my chest, but I didn't say anything to my boyfriend. The dog kept pacing in circles, we both laughed about it, blaming it on her 13 years of age. We watched our small fire burn out and retired around 9 pm I fell asleep immediately. I woke up to the dog crying outside the tent. The boyfriend was sitting up in his sleeping bag. I asked if he was okay. He said he felt strange. I let the dog in the tent, I make her sleep outside. I know, bad dog owner. Call the ASPCA, the dog was acting so strange, she was shaking like she was scared. I put her between us to warm her up and calm her down. She stared into my eyes with the whites of her eyes showing. She's a cattle dog, not afraid of anything. I started to feel anxious. The boyfriend said he was cold and had a terrible headache. I gave him some Tylenol out of the first aid kit and took a look at the time. 2 AM he showed signs of altitude sickness and hypothermia. We live at 8,000 feet, we were camping at 10,500 feet, and the temps were in the upper 20s. It didn't make sense to me. We're used to this climate, and I felt fine. The dog looked alarmed. She stopped breathing, like she does when she sees something. Her ears perked up, and she stared out the door of the tent. 20 minutes later, the boyfriend said he was burning up. He wanted out of his sleeping bag. I made him stay in his bag, thinking it was hypothermia. I told him he would be okay. I got out of the tent to make a hot drink, and the dog went wild. She ran out of the tent and stood beside me, growling in every direction. I shined my spot headlamp everywhere with nothing in sight. I told her it was okay. She wouldn't listen. The boyfriend started saying we needed to leave. He got out of the tent and started to frantically pack our camp. I pleaded with him to calm down. I've never seen him not be mellow. He is the voice of reason in our relationship. I'm usually the one to overreact. We are both EMS and SAR trained, this was bizarre behavior, he kept saying, we need to get out of here. At 2.45 AM, we started our 10 mile trek back to the trailhead where our truck was parked. I'm normally in the front when we hike, but this night I was a shepherd and stayed in the back, keeping the boyfriend in the front and the dog between us. We walked silently for an hour. I've never been afraid of the woods. I've had things happen, and I've been afraid of situations, but never of the woods. That night, I was terrified of the woods. I stayed calm. Three miles into the way back, a stick popped. The dog stopped in front of me. The boyfriend started shining his headlamp to our left. A dark mass moved 30 feet from us. I put my light on it but couldn't see the body. The eyes looked at us and stopped. I grabbed the bear spray, I was convinced it was a bear. We yelled at it, go on, bear. But it stood there. My light was on its body but all I could make out was its size. It was 6 to 7 feet tall. It moved towards us after what felt like an eternity of staring into glowing eyes. It was upright, with a long tail. Once again, it stopped, this time 20 feet from us. I still couldn't make out what it was. The eye was closed, it looked like it crouched, and it was gone. The dog stood behind us, shaking and silent. We began to walk quickly, keeping a light eye behind and ahead of us. We didn't talk. At dawn, a bow hunter was running towards us up the trail. I said hello, and he stopped and looked into my eyes. He nodded and said it will be okay. I was exhausted, terrified, and still shaken by what had happened a couple of hours before. His reaction scared me even more. We must have looked in bad shape. We got back to the truck around 7.30 am the boyfriend was still not feeling well, and the dog looked like she was about to die. I drove us 4 hours home. It took 2 days for the dog and the boyfriend to feel well again. I don't know what happened to us in the woods that night. I don't feel like what we saw was an animal. It felt like something demonic took hold of my family that night. We talked about that night for the first time a couple of nights ago. The boyfriend said he felt like something had taken him over, like he didn't have any control over his thoughts or emotions. He said a voice told him to leave our campsite. He said he would have left with or without me. When I was younger, around 14 or 15 years old. My family used to camp at a state park. Every night, my friend and I would walk through the woods. We called this the ritual. This particular night, we decided to walk further into the woods than usual. We had flashlights, and we liked to try and navigate through the woods with them turned off. We were about half a mile from the nearest campsite when we heard soft whispering behind us. Obviously, we hit the flashlights and spun around. I didn't see anything. So we kept walking, and we heard it again. 
This time we stopped and looked around a bit before we decided to head back to our campsite. Then we see what's whispering. It's a lady crawling on the ground, whispering just random words. She was wearing dark clothes and was covered in dirt. When she sees that we notice her, she stands up and declares that she is looking for her campsite. We ended up walking her back to the campground and trying to help her find her group. It turns out she was just super drunk or high and got lost trying to find a bathroom. Her friends didn't even notice she was missing, and if we didn't go that far into the woods, she would have been lost all night. It was pretty creepy. I used to live in a small trailer park in the middle of nowhere. We were surrounded mostly by swamps and sawgrass, but we also had some parts that had forest as well. I remember being 10 or 11-ish and having random adventures in the swamps and forests. But I had this one encounter that still ducks with me to this day. It was like after 6, and I spent the majority of the day just adventuring in the woods with a couple of friends, and we happened to find this abandoned cemetery deep in the woods. Like a good 3 miles deep. This cemetery looked old. Broken down iron or wood fence. The gravestones were completely dirty and deteriorated. The trees completely blocked the sun out, and some parts were completely swamped. Now, mind you, it's starting to get dark, and this was during the winter, so it does get cold out here. The air was pretty breezy all day until, all of a sudden, it stopped. No noise. All the sounds that you normally hear in the woods have completely vanished. All we can hear is our heavy breathing and our steps. To this day, I don't know what I ducking saw, but it still scares the hell out of me. From the swampy part of the cemetery, we saw something come out. Wasn't an animal at all. This thing straight up looked like it was putrid and bloated. It was covered with mud and twigs and made a disgusting sound. It started crawling slowly towards our side. I noped the duck out of there and ran all the way back home. My friends and I crashed at one of our homes, and we couldn't stop watching out the window, thinking that thing would hunt us down or something. We went back a few weeks later with weapons because, like the dumb little kids we are, we needed to verify that this thing was real. We went all the way back and found nothing. This goddamn place just disappeared. We spent days going back trying to find it, even going back at the same time, but nothing. To this day, we all agree on what we witnessed. 2015. My wife and I moved to Seattle from the Midwest. In September, my wife and I decided to hike the Iron Goat Trail in the Cascade Mountains with our little pooch. Same trail that leads to a train wreck from back in the early 1900s. Pack a flashlight, an inf meter, and a voice recorder, hoping to catch Casper in the tunnels. Also pack a Glock 20. 10mm pistol, with extra magazines for the scary things that aren't ghosts. Leave the house at noon and get to the parking lot at 2. Hike the flat part first, mistake. It's about 3.15pm now, and we hike up the switchback. Brutal. Hard. 30 degree angle. Get to the top, and it's starting to get dark and a lot colder. Decide to finish hiking, how bad could it be? 5.10, it starts to get darker, darker, and finally darker. I'm glad I brought a flashlight. The wife walks through a hole in the trail. After a brief scare, all's well. No sprain, nothing broken. Continue on. Dog's happy. Now it's really dark and cold. It starts to get eerie. No noise at all. Nothing. We stop and just listen. The wife is so scared. I scan the woods with the flashlight, thinking that some poor kids are going to see that human pine cone and think a bear came through here. There is still nothing but silence around us, the fetid smell of failure and shadows. Look at your Garmin Oregon GPS, you're only 2 miles from the truck. Say positive things, pet the dog, and continue on. Now it's weird again. It's still dead quiet, but it goes from the 40s, Fahrenheit, to the 60s. Not cold anymore. Why? Ask your wife if she notices. She does, but she doesn't care. She says get me the FU at hash out of here. I still don't see anything strange. The Glock 20 has been in my hand the whole time. Wife holding the dog on a short leash still. Continue for three quarters mile and reach the truck. It's cold again. Get in the truck, head to the Bigfoot coffee shop, and grab some mochas. When I was 18 years old, I was hitchhiking across the country and spending most of my time camping in remote mountains, woods, and deserts. I was about an hour west of Eugene at some little known natural hot springs. I had spent the day soaking and then went to my campsite, which was up a grassy hill with some very thick trees and brush behind. Below the hill was a field lined by a dark and dense old growth forest. I was happy and calm, and I was going to sleep under the stars as usual. I had a nice big fire going and was sitting on a log reading from a small book of poetry, A Road Less Traveled, by Robert Frost. Keep in mind that I spent the last year and a half in the wilderness. 
I had camped under the stars in Yellowstone and heard wolves barking and howling around me in the night. I had encountered bears many times. I had never been very shy because I knew how to be around wild animals and how to prevent them from bothering me. This is to say that whatever I encountered this night was something I had never encountered before. I was reading my book when I heard something large, heavy, and bipedal crash very quickly through the very thick brush behind me. The sound was fairly far off but approached me very quickly, though it sounded like fast walking, not running. I don't know of any human or animal who could move like that through that thick brush. I didn't really have time to register what was happening when it was directly behind me. The terror I felt was something that I can't really describe. I felt that if I turned to look at it, I would die of terror, so I stared at the fire, frozen in place. I felt this sense of pure evil coming from it, as if it wanted nothing more than to tear me to shreds, body, mind, and soul. It began to pace back and forth and back and forth behind me with large, heavy bipedal steps. I had a large hunting knife on my belt, which I had been grasping tightly, but I released it, grasped a crystal in my pocket, and began to pray silently for life in my soul. I felt that a knife was no good against this thing. I didn't know what I believed in as far as God and all that, but I knew that only a higher power could save me from this evil. I don't know how long this has been behind me. I never moved and just prayed in my mind in a state of near senseless terror. After what seemed like an eternity, I heard it walk down the hill below me. I still didn't look. I could hear it walk away off, and just before it got to the old growth forest, it let out an ungodly sound that I wish I could forget. It was a loud, very deep whoa, and then it left the forest. I stayed the whole night staring at my fire, praying for sunrise. When the sun finally came up, I hightailed it out of there. Down the hill I noticed something I hadn't seen the day before, it was what looked like a grave someone had made for a deceased pet, with a stick cross tied with string, only it was dug up with bloody rags and blankets strewn all over. Anyhow, I started having a lot of bad trouble after that, starting that day as I hitched out of there, which also happened to be my birthday. I've only told a few people, and they've all brushed it off as a bear or an elk. That's utter bull, though. After all the years I've spent in the wild, I don't know what a bear or elk sounds like or how it moves. No, this was nothing of the sort. I don't know what it was, but it was unnatural and evil, and I hope and pray I never encounter it again. I was at Girl Scout camp when I was about 10 or 11 years old. We had big green canvas tents that had four cots each in them and a tent opening, flap, in the front and a tent opening in the back. The tents were raised off the ground, and the floors were wood slats. My cot was located in the back right-hand corner. On the second night of camp, we all went to bed. I remember getting scared because there was a spider on the wall of the tent by my cot and I had asked a counselor to get rid of it for me. I remember this specifically. The next morning, I awoke in the front left-hand corner cottage. A different cot. Sleeping bag and everything, my stuff under my bed. I have no idea how it happened. It wasn't a prank. I'm a light enough sleeper that nobody could have just picked me up and moved me and I don't think the other girls were that strong. I have a crazy theory. I think I used to live in a different dimension and switched into another dimension that night, and this dimension is the one I have lived in ever since. I don't think I was supposed to remember. Or maybe I'm just a crazy person. There might be that. This happened when I was about six years old. I was at my grandpa's house in central Texas. He had a house on the river, and growing along the banks of the river was what we kids call the bamboo forest, a huge thicket of bamboo, tall as trees, that must have covered a few acres of land, from grandpa's house at the end of the road all the way up to about five or six houses down. The bamboo was so thick, you'd walk in on a bright, sunny Texas day, and inside the bamboo forest it'd be nearly dark. There were paths and little clearings that we kids had made in the forest over many years, my mom, her sisters, and their cousins had played in the forest long before us. I was in there one day, alone, playing with my G.I. Joes, and this man approached me. I say man because to me, at the time, he was a grown-up. But when I see him clearly now in my mind, and I do, clear as day, he must have been only around 19 or 20. He was wearing blue jeans and a button-down striped Oxford shirt, and he had a backpack over one shoulder. He asked me if I could help him find his glasses. I dropped them over that way, he said, pointing towards a particularly dark spot under the canopy, and I can't see well enough to find them. Being a young, stupid, helpful kid, I said sure and I followed him to the place he said he dropped them. He feigned to bend down and scan the dark ground for his glasses, and when he did, I saw his glasses poking out from his front shirt pocket. I was suddenly filled with this sensation that said run. And so I did, I just took off. The man or boy called out to me, and I could hear him start to run after me, but I knew where the paths were, and I was fast. I was cutting right through the overgrowth, 
but I could hear him struggling to make his way through. I burst through the forest into the sunlight, and I ran towards my grandpa's house, screaming for him. My mom and my grandpa came out of the house, and they ran to me. I ran to my mom's arms, and they asked me what was wrong, and through my tears, I told them. They took me into the house and sat me on the couch, and my grandpa told my mom and me, stay here, then he went and got his hunting rifle, and I watched him head into the forest. He came back later, and I watched him walk from the forest towards the house with a strange look on his face. He came in, and he told my mom, he's gone. Call the police. The police came, and some asked me questions, and the others went with their guns and their flashlights, searching the forest, but they didn't find anyone either. The next day, my grandpa had some tree trimmers come in and raise the portion of the forest that was on his property. Years later, I was talking to my mom about this experience, and she told me something that they kept from me at the time, my grandpa found a discarded backpack in the forest. Inside were a knife, some duct tape, and rope. My cousin, friends, and I gathered up our camping supplies, fishing poles, food, etc. and headed down while the sun was still up, although it was close to setting. In the last hour of the day, we started our fire, set up our tent, and started goofing off. Mind you, there was no alcohol, drugs, or any other substance that would have impaired our perceptions. This was all witnessed, felt, or heard by everyone involved. It was not long after the sun set and total darkness was upon us that the first sign that something wasn't right began. My cousin and I were sitting on the bank of the creek, roughly 30 feet from our camping site. We had a spotlight, shining it down in the water, spotting fish and trying to spear them. We weren't very successful, but that's not the important part. After about three minutes of doing this, we noticed that every time we shut the light off, we would hear a whooshing sound in the water. Very distinctly the sound of someone sloshing through water. When we turned the light back on, you could see waves and ripples in the water. Not slight ripples that could be called by a fish or something else, but very heavy, rough ripples that needed weight to cause. This alone was not enough to cause concern, but my cousin and I looked at each other, thinking, that's weird, but we went on about our business. Sitting back at the campsite, with the fire raging in front of us, we started shooting the breeze and enjoying the night. However, it wasn't long before, once again, weird things started we started hearing voices echoing off the hillside. They were more like whispers, but they were loud, if that makes any sense. At first, this wouldn't be cause for alarm, as people hunt for raccoons at all hours of the night. However, the voices never got louder or softer. They stayed at the same volume. They sounded like they were practically on top of us. They were so clear and loud that it sounded like someone was whispering directly into my ear, but everyone was hearing it that way. So it was like one voice was whispering into our collective ears. We looked around our immediate area and found nothing. There were tall weeds and grass in the area around our campsite, and once or twice it sounded like someone ran through them. Solid thuds on the ground, the grass thrashing and moving violently. The fear had begun to sink in. At first, the voice was very hushed and indistinct, but clearly audible. After about two to three minutes, it started to become more apparent. The voice was whispering about us. What are they doing here? They need to leave you shouldn't be here. If this sounds like something out of a horror novel, I am 100% inclined to agree with you. At this point, sheer panic broke out. We decided at that moment to leave. Quickly, the ATV was parked just out of the firelight, still visible but faintly. As I stood up, looked at my friends, and told them that we needed to go, I started to jog towards the ATV to get it started while my friends got what they absolutely couldn't leave behind that night. I was looking over my shoulder at first, and when I turned to look ahead at the ATV, I was literally frozen in place at what I saw. Standing just beside the ATV, under a tree, was the outline of a tall man in what looked like a hat. You could see no details, it was just blackness. You could see through it, as it was transparent, but what was beyond looked twisted and distorted, like looking through water or something. It was so dark that it stood out against the pitch black night behind it. Remembering that we are in a forested valley, in between two rather large hills. The moon wasn't giving much illumination where we were, so it was dark, and this thing was darker than that. There were no red eyes, as I've read in other encounters with such things, but I'm sure there are variants of every type of supernatural thing. He had no feet, they just sort of ended at his ankles in wavy lines, almost like what heat waves look like above a fire. My heart sank into my stomach, and an undeniable feeling of fear and revulsion took over. I could not move. I could not speak. I was rooted on the spot from the moment I laid eyes on it. This is the moment where I realized, holy crap, ghosts are real. My cousin came up just beside me at that time and saw it too. He was also just frozen on the spot. 
After about 10 to 15 seconds, I don't really know, it seemed like an eternity to me, it sort of zipped back in the direction of the train tunnels. The best way I can describe it is, if you remember the flash, how he had sort of an outline of himself behind him as he moved really fast. Just like that. It just went very quickly back into the darkness and disappeared. We got on that ATV and hauled out of there with full fury, like the hounds of hell were on our tail, because for all we knew, they were. We spent the night indoors, wide awake and scared to death, while we tried to rationalize and make sense of what we had just experienced. It wasn't until afterwards that I learned about all the things I wrote about above and heard from men who are hard men, guys who show no fear to any living thing that I wouldn't want to cross under any circumstance, that even they avoid that area at night. Nobody goes through that section after the sun goes down. We didn't know this, of course, or we would have heeded their advice. Music